One. Show us some love to your facility with a trauma rag. I received a trauma rag. We have a 21 year old male involved in an altercation at a nightclub. Bystander says there may have been weapons involved. The patient has multiple contusions and abrasions to the face at this time. He is innovated, withdraws from painful stimuli. We have him at the GCS of 6 at this time. Vitals are as follows We have a current blood pressure of 98 over 58, heart rate of 121. We have a current temperature of 99.0. We're at the back door. Do you need any further? We have a 21 year old male, laceration to the upper left forehead. We have an 18 gauge of sandwich in the left AC. GCS is currently still at six. Vital signs have not changed from radio report. Can you tell us what happened? Bystanders say that there was a fight in the middle of the club. Not too many people saw much, but right. they said that they were working too well. They didn't say what kind of work was involved. Ready? Can you tell me what happened? Um, they got a lot of blood on the stretch. Oh, no, we got got Do we have some of the last bridges towards the forehead? Chest movement? Well, we got a lot of blood coming out from somewhere else. We're checking pulses. Okay. Yep. We want to walk home so we can look at the back. See any hyper-resonant? Hyper-resonant on the left side? Yeah, we're going to follow the sound here. Blood pressure 58 over 40. Take it. Um, okay. Go all right, we have some jugular vein dissension and some brachial deviation. Well, let's give him a heel chest decompression right now, second intercostal space. Uh, did we the yeah. yeah, we got the US 14, yeah. 14 gauge needle. Orange. Where do you guys want to place this needle? Second intercostal of the rib, mid ventricular. Right above the third rib. Okay. Left side. Come in, guys. Hello, this is uh, Bob. He's a 68 year old male, insulin dependent diabetic. Uh, his wife woke up this morning, found him altered. Uh, we got on scene, he's not alert. He usually gets up about 6 a.m. Wife couldn't get him up. And uh, she said he was acting erratically. And uh, no complaints last night. He ate a normal meal. He does have a history of hypertension, high cholesterol. And, uh, he's an insulin dependent diabetic, takes an aspirin a day. And that's about it. Any allergies? Uh, penicillin. Penicillin. Can you tell me your name, please? Can you tell me your name? 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 
Can you feel my hand? Yeah. Can you feel my hand? You can feel it. Okay, I'm feeling something. I'd like a CBC, a CMP. Do you have any allergies? Okay, white blood cells are high. Okay, so he may be he may be toxic, he may be subject subject. Just lay on down, sir. We're gonna take care of you. Give him a side. This is six. Ooh, six. Okay, so we gotta get him some insulin. Yeah. Okay. How much? So if I have blood just spurting out of my neck, painting the ceiling right now, okay? Do we have time, two or three minutes to wait to address that bleeding? What's going to happen three minutes from now if blood is squirting out of my neck? You're going to have no blood. I don't have any blood left to squirt. Absolutely. So we're going to assess the ABCs, right? So airway, just a quick recap. Airway, make sure it's what? It's open. Patent, clear, absolutely. So you have to open it to assess it, right? Okay, so you open the airway, head tilt, chin lift if it is medical, those C-spine trauma. If there's suspected head neck trauma, we do a what? Jaw thrust. Jaw thrust, absolutely. So you open the airway, head tilt, chin lift, or jaw thrust. Uh, at that point, what are we gonna do? Make sure it's clear. If it's not clear, what do we do? We make it clear before we function. If it's solid, it's just Everyone knew their role and they yeah. stuck to it. Someone didn't know something. We just helped each other out. Yeah. Well, the designations are a small component, but every position is very important. One does not outweigh the other. So you guys did really good. The patients didn't die. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Okay. But the first case had a, a hand fracture. He had a boxer's fracture. I don't know if you guys saw that on the x-ray. Um, and then the second guy was also lethargic. So always keep your differential. I had an attending that would always ask me for my top five. So in DKA, obviously it's DKA, but sometimes it could be from an infection. Could he be septic? Could he be hyperosmolar? Could he be having an MI? An MI can give you, uh, you know, can throw you into DKA, or is he just plain old like non-compliant? A lot of infection. So chest X-ray would have been normal on this patient. Always remembering your differentials and when don't get tunnel vision. Especially when I practice in the ER, I think of killer, common, and zebra, right? What's the killer, what's the most common thing, and what's the weirdest thing that it could be? So make sure you look at those things. Other than that, you guys did a great job. Just remember communication and effectiveness working in the group. You guys did good. I mean, this is the way it's going to be in real life. A lot of times it's disorganized, but you guys noticed the most important thing was communication and everybody having their role assigned. I first heard about first response training group. Uh, my dad had come home from a long night at the hospital with my sister at Whitney Palmer where she was giving birth to her first child. He handed me a first response training group business card. I'd never heard of the school. Um, I was very enthusiastic about trying new schools so because I've had bad experience at others um, where I was just a number. Um, when I came into first response, I actually went in the next day that my dad handed me the card. I was able to sit here and speak with uh, Nicole Rosa about the program. I liked it so much, I signed up that day and I started EMT school a month later. Um, I had, was struggling in the beginning of my EMT program, um, but I was able to uh, bounce back 
uh, due to the help of the instructors and Jay Marquez. Um, so because they're so personable, they were able to help me back. Um, I was able to graduate EMT school and start paramedic. One thing that really appealed to me about first response was that I was able, first of all, to meet with the instructors personally before even starting the program. I was also uh, given a complete uh, curriculum and what we're going to do and was able to see the facility and see that they have an ambulance and an ER room that you can practice on. You can actually practice the skills that you learn in class and from your textbook and apply them directly there instead of going in the field, not really knowing what you're doing because you just read it from the textbook. First response, very high tech, cutting edge, dedicated uh, folks that participate, very dedicated staff and faculty here. The way uh, First Response has this facility set up is feels very, very real. Um, you know, I feel like I'm in the ER with the monitors and everything is very state of the art. In First Response, we not only recognize the importance of pre-hospital training, but we also make the student the center of the education. We know that in the field of emergency medicine, seconds are vital, and we want to make sure that our students are prepared well enough that when they walk into any situation, they will be ready and they will feel confident that they have the proper training instilled in them in their education to be able to react to whatever type of patient they are dealt with.